Over two decades ago, we made the commitment to invest in the downstream petroleum sector in response to the inc uh, increasing shortages of petroleum products in our country and the subsequent and the consequent challenges on our economy and its negative impact on the lives and livelihoods of our people. Initially, we thought to enter into the industry by acquiring the brown field refineries under the current government's uh, privatization program in 2007. Regrettably, the outcome of the exercise was reversed and our payment returned. This motivated us to rethink our market entry strategy and our business model. We subsequently committed to enter the market boldly with a vision to invest in a green fuel refinery that will transform the industry in Nigeria and Africa as a whole. And that is why we went for the biggest refinery ever built in the world. We decided on a plan designed with a set of art technology and at a scale in capacity that would be a game changer in Africa and the global market. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, the facility we are commissioning today is aimed to reposition Nigeria as a key player in the downstream petroleum market of the global uh, I mean, petroleum sector on the global market. We have built a refinery with a capacity of 650,000 barrels per day of crude oil, plus 900,000 metric tons of polypropylene in a single train, which is the largest built ever. We have selected the best plants and equipment and the latest technology from across the world. Our product slate is designed to meet the highest quality standards of the high value products, including premium motor spirit, PMS, automotive gas, oil, diesel, aviation fuel, kerosene, ATK, all of Euro 5 standards that will enable us to meet not only, I mean, not only to meet our country's demand but also to become a key player in the African and the global market. Our coastal location and offshore, our coastal location and offshore loading and offloading single point mooring facilities with the capacity to receive all our crude oil supplies and evacuate up to 75% of our liquid products giving us direct access to the rest of Africa and the global market for exports. In addition, 80% of our production can also be discharged through trucks to go around Nigeria. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, our huge investment of over $18.5 billion in this industry has been prompted by our desire to support and contribute our quota to the federal government's sustained efforts to transform our economy and properly position our country as a leading nation in Africa. And also a respected member among economies in Africa. Your Excellency, Mr. President, this commissioning ceremony it's just the beginning of a great journey. A milestone in a new and exciting trajectory for our downstream sector of Nigeria's oil and gas industry. It is our firm commitment that we will replicate this sector, what we have actually achieved in the cement and fertilizer markets where Nigeria trans uh, transited from being the largest importer of these two products to a net exporter. Beyond today's ceremony, our first goal is to ramp up production of the various production to ensure that within this year, we are able to fully satisfy our nation's demand
for higher quality products to enable us to eliminate the tragedy of importing uh, of importing dependency and stop I mean, of import dependency and stop once and for all the dumping in our market of toxic substandard petroleum products. Your Excellency, Your Excellency, distinguished guest, our first product will be in the market before the end of Ju uh, before the end of July, beginning of August this year. Beyond this, we intend to ensure that our plants are run at the highest capacity utilization and the highest efficiency to enable us to export competitively to other markets, especially in the airports and the wider region in which 53 countries out of 55 are dependent on imports to meet their petroleum product demand. This is a clear opportunity for Nigeria given the African Union's commitment to the creation of an African common market through recently established African continental free trade area regime. Let me now briefly touch on the immediate benefits of today's commissioning that will bring to our economy and our people. First, beyond the constant availability of a high uh, quality floors for our transportation sector. The refinery will also make available to our industries vital raw materials for a wide range of manufacturers in the plastics, pharmaceuticals, food, beverages, packaging, construction, and many other industries. Second, while the refinery operation and uh, uh, ancillary businesses will generate massive job opportunities the downstream value chain will equally provide far more absorptive capacity for labor in the hundreds of thousands. Third, once our plan is fully commissioned and it is on stream, we expect that at least 40% of the capacity will be available for export and this will result in significant foreign exchange and in, into the country. Overall, we are committed to operating our plant in line with international best practice, recognizing the importance of protecting the environment. We have adopted stringent environmental health and safety policies to ensure that the refinery operates in a safe and sustainable manner. Mr. President, distinguished, uh, Mr. President, other excellencies, distinguished guests, the journey to this event was long and odious. It could not have been possible without the support and collaboration of many parties and individuals. I'm immensely delighted to be here today to witness this historic occasion which heralds a significant accomplishment for Nigeria's foremost industrial day, Alaji Aliko Dangote, the group, the Dangote group, as well as our beloved nation, Nigeria, and indeed the entire continent of Africa. Today, our history is being rewritten, and Nigeria's trajectory for greater growth and prosperity is enhanced as we inaugurate Africa's largest refinery, the Dangote Refinery, alongside its petrochemical plant. I congratulate Alaji Aleko Dangote and his team for their uncommon tenacity and unwavering commitment in completing this project, notwithstanding various challenges that they have faced. More importantly, please permit me to congratulate and thank President Muhammad Buhari for his unrivaled leadership, vision, and support in ensuring that this significant project, which exemplifies the president's effort towards building a more productive economy was completed during his tenure as president. Mr. President, sir, it is on record that when the NNPC was created in 1997, 
you were the first, you were the corporation's first chairman and shepherded them into the behemoth they are today. As Federal Commissioner of Petroleum Resources, you completed and commissioned Nigeria's wholly owned refinery in Wari in 1978. While significantly improving the readiness of the Kaduna refinery, which was also commissioned in 1980. As president, you have not only superintended over the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, you led the efforts toward the finalization and enactment of the Petroleum Industry Act, a law that had eluded many presidents before you, sir. Your Excellency, over the last eight years, your far-reaching vision and deep knowledge has also been instrumental in the tremendous growth of the construction phase of this refinery for which we are here today. Mr. President, today, your name goes into the, our annals of history as you yet again commission the biggest single train refinery in the world in Nigeria. Your Excellencies, as you all are aware, this complex comprises a refinery, a petrochemical plant, a urea and fertilizer plant, and a subsea pipeline project. This petrochemical facility has a capacity to produce 900,000 metric tons of polypropylene per annum, while urea will be able to produce 3 million metric tons urea annually. Its, plastic, its flagship project, for which we are here today, the Dangote Refinery, which has the capacity to produce 650,000 barrels of crude per day, is the largest single train in the world. Given its pro pro processing capacity, this refinery is more than able to meet all of Nigeria's domestic fuel consumption, whilst the excess production will be available for export. This will not only aid our domestic production needs, but also help in generating export revenue for our country. This refinery is designed to process not only bony light grade of crude oil, but also process a wide range of other crude streams, including many from Africa, some Middle Mid Eastern streams, and the U.S. bony light. Your Excellency, in September 2013, when Alaji Dangote announced his plans for a refinery, it was estimated to cost just about $9 billion. By 2017, when Dangote Group commenced this project, the project had escalated, and due to an array of factors, the project was eventually completed today at a total cost of $18.5 billion with a contribution of 50% equity investment by Dangote and 50% debt finance by our banks. I'm delighted to announce, Your Excellency, that the commercial loan component of the project was financed majorly by our domestic banks with a balance source from foreign banks. The Central Bank of Nigeria also partnered, as always, with Dangote in ensuring the successful completion of this project by providing over 125 billion naira to cover domestic currency requirement for the venture, while also ensuring the availability of foreign exchange to pay for the importation of some of the plants and machinery being commissioned today. Your Excellencies, we have it on good authority that the Dangote Group has paid down some portion of this commercial loan, even before this commissioning today. As at today, total loans outstanding has dropped from over $9 billion when this project started to $2.7 billion today. Alaji, please pardon me, I have to reveal numbers here. This reflects the astute credit worthiness and commercial capability of the group and its chairman, Alaji Dangote. Your Excellencies, 
Please permit me at this juncture to appreciate all the participating local Nigerian banks who did not only partner with the project through effective financing, but were keenly aware of the importance of the project to our country. They provided immense support. It carries the potential to support security of supply for refined petroleum products and petrochemicals in Nigeria and the region, as clearly articul articulated by Elijah Likot Angujan. It opens the possibility of genuine commercial market and step forward in our collective efforts to make in Nigeria a net export of petroleum products to the international markets. This no doubt offers opportunity for efficiencies, better value, and improved governance as healthy competition always offsets market monopoly. The benefits will be real and tangible for consumers as well as the economy and the country more generally. This remarkable achievement by this very extraordinary visionary is not taking place in a vacuum. This extraordinary facility that we see here today is not standing on a reinforced concrete and steel platforms only, but also on the enabling business environment that the government of our country continues to provide, and we are most grateful for this. The reforms that, have take, that, take, that, have, that we have undertaken in the Nigeria's petroleum industry, under the informed leadership of President Muhammad Buhari, we have built around a clear set of principles that anticipate the tremendous changes that will take place in the international energy market in the decades to come. As always intended, we are committed to continue to add value here at home from the extractive industries in order to maximize benefits and value to all Nigerians. The NMPC Limited will continue to support investment in domestic refining to satisfy growing demands for refined petroleum products in both local and regional markets, as against simply exporting unprocessed crude to diminishing markets overseas. The external shocks in recent years from COVID-19 and the conflict in Europe are tangible reminders that energy is not just a business, but a vital component of national security. Reliable access to fairly priced energy is the key to domestic economic growth, job creation, sustained democracy, and a stable international order. As the world transits to cleaner sources of energy on account of climate change concerns, many developing countries across Africa and Asia are left to contend with energy poverty while managing the impact of climate change. Nigeria, Africa as a whole, produces a small amount of carbon emissions, but we profoundly suffer the consequences of the gathering climate emergency, flooding and droughts, sometimes simultaneously. Tensions over land use, and the list is very long. And that's why the Dangote refinery, with the new deal that we have been building, supported by the Enabling Petroleum Act, will surely provide domestic security of supply in our country. There's no doubt about it. However, the lingering challenge of petroleum motor spirit subsidies is clearly getting out of the capacity of the state to bear. And the depressions that domestic refining will provide is insignificant and cannot compensate for the subsidies. And may I use this opportunity to say that, you know, we can, it's very, very difficult to continue to bear subsidy bills in the excess of 400 billion naira every month. We are harnessing our resources to meet our own needs. The NMPC Limited equity holding in the gigantic assets is strategic as the, as the supply of large resort to the Nigerian market. We will continue to work with investors to develop hydrocarbon assets using the most modern and innovative technologies to realize the potentials of our resources and power the transition towards clean energy in the decades ahead. The scale of the ambition of the Dangote refinery is plain to, to see. The vision behind it and the optimism it generates for a better future is even more exciting. We should all be proud to be part of this historic education, especially you, Mr. President. Well, this afternoon to commission this Greenfield Angote Oil Refinery and Petrochemical Complex. I recall that just about a year ago, 
I was here to commission your fertilizer plant and had the opportunity to briefly inspect this refinery complex then under construction. On that occasion, the group chairman, Alhaji Ali Kodongote, hinted to me that the refinery will also be ready for commissioning before the end of my tenure in office and will extend the invitation for me to return to Lekki for this purpose. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let me therefore congratulate the chairman, the board and management of the Dangote group for achieving this remarkable feat. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you sincerely for the invitation. I am informed that this complex has the capacity to process 650,000 barrels a day of crude, which will enable our country to achieve self sufficiency in the refined products and even have some surplus for export. This clearly makes this event a notable milestone for our economy and a game changer for the downstream petroleum product market, not only in Nigeria, but the entire African continent. I am aware that this is not the first time the Dongote Group under al Hadi Ali for Dongote's leadership is footing Nigeria on the global map through his bold, visionary, and courageous investment in key industries. The group has helped to transform our economy from heavy import dependence to a net exporter in some critical industries, including cement and fertilizer. Our, our economy, which has been stressed for many decades by huge deficits in economic infrastructure and over a decade of insurgency, has also been severely impacted by several external crises, including the global financial crisis, the collapse of oil prices, the coronavirus pandemic, and the Russia-Ukraine war. The consequences of these challenges constitute a severe strain on our economy, limiting government's ability to provide basic infrastructure without resorting to huge borrowings. Our government, therefore, took the decision to focus attention on creating an enabling environment for the private sector to thrive and fill the enormous gap in investment, not only in infrastructure, but also in all critical sectors. We recognize that without active participation of the private sector and a strong commitment to public private partnership, our economy will continue to remain severely challenged and our economic growth impeded. Government, therefore, will and should continue to provide an enabling environment and encourage innovative public-private partnership in all sectors of our economy. Our administration has demonstrated its commitment to this in many areas such as our Executive Order 007 of 2019, which facilitated the rehabilitation, construction of many roads by private sector investors using tax credit scheme. It is my hope that the succeeding administration will continue to apply such innovative schemes in partnership with the private sector to accelerate the provision of critical infrastructure, in particular roads, power, and gas pipelines. I am aware that the Dongote Group is already fully involved in this, part, in this public partnership scheme, and we must commend Ali Al Haji Aleko for his leadership of the business sector and his commitment to the transformation of our economy. 
I urge and encourage our other great entrepreneurs to emulate this iconic Nigerian industrialist and join the government in accelerating our growth in order to realize our country's globally recognized economic potential. When I travel around Africa and meet and engage my brother heads of state, and I'm delighted some of their excellencies are here, I often sense a quiet expectation that our country is blessed with resources and human capacity to lead Africa's rise to economic prosperity and the attainment of Agenda 2063, the Africa we all want.